Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching Communication Systems. In this series of video lectures, I'm going to be introducing and covering topics on phased locked loops. This is going to be sort of a medium level introduction to phased locked loops, uh, perhaps not quite as basic as some of the other things you may have seen, uh, It's, but also definitely not as complex as some of the uh, videos that cover it at more of a graduate level. So what we're going to do is we will look at some theory uh, related to the control systems. We'll look at some of the uh, ideas of how this works, but we won't focus quite as much on uh, some of the, the circuitry, but more on the theory of how, how the loop works with the control system at somewhat of a, a medium level, because this is not a controls class, but phase locked loops are quite important to communication systems as well as many other systems. So first, what um, this is kind of going to be how we approach this topic because it's pretty complex. First, we're going to get a general understanding of how a phase lock loop should work. So we're going to build up uh, a couple different topics together to see uh, how a phase lock loop might work to uh, control the the phase uh, of of a. A signal. Then we're going to look at a, a simplified phase lock loop analysis. Uh, in the case when you do a small signal analysis, when you have a, a linear system, then we'll consider higher order linear phase lock loop. So we'll keep it linear, but we'll take a look at what might happen if you use a higher order function, transfer function, or a filter function. Then we're going to uh, return to uh, nonlinear phase lock loop behavior and look at a very simple case. And then lastly, we'll discuss a few general ideas about how phase lock loops work. So the applications of phase lock loops are pretty uh, big. They're, they're used for a lot of things. Uh, demodulation of amplitude modulation signals, demodulation of angle modulated signals, and then beyond that there's a lot of different things um, that are somewhat outside of our scope, but um, in digital systems you can use them for clock timing and recovery. And the great thing about phase lock loops is that they're actually a pretty simple circuit, but they can do a lot of uh, uh, valuable tasks for you. So this is why they're uh, so widely used in, in many different systems, both analog and digital. The components of them are typically going to be a voltage controlled oscillator, and this is main, this is uh, going to be denoted as a VCO for most of this video. Uh, then something else, uh, a multiplier or detector to compare the phase. So you'll need to, some different way, uh, some way to compare the phase, as might be indicated by the fact that it says a phase locked loop. Uh, there's a number of different circuits on these. A lot of the videos that are out there already, they mostly discuss uh, various types of circuits and clock chips and how, how that might work. Uh, but we're going to actually, this is one of the things that we're mostly not going to talk about in this, instead choosing to just assume that it's possible for this video series. And then lastly, there's going to be some uh, loop filter in your feedback loop. So one last thing before we get into this is uh, why phase lock loop? You know, why doesn't why don't they say it's like a frequency locked loop or something like this? Well, uh, this graph hopefully will indicate something to you. So let's let's see two different waves that have different frequencies. Right? If we look at these waves, just choose some point. Um, we can see that they this distance between these two is changing throughout here. So as we move along these um, these two uh, waves, we can see that they're always uh, separated by something. So they have some some separation between their um, their different points, and this this is because they they have uh, different frequencies, and that means that they're also at different phases all the time. However, in this case, we have two waves with the same frequency, and we can see that the phase between them is constant all the time. So no matter uh, where you are in time, right? there's a constant phase difference between these two. So if you're able to uh, get to the point where you have two different waves where you know for sure uh, in time we have a situation where their phase, the phase difference stays constant, then we know that those waves are going to have the same frequency, whereas in this case uh, they don't. So the phase lock loop comes from the fact that we're, um, if, if you lock in that phase or have two different uh, functions, two different, two different waves that have the same phase constantly throughout time, this means as well that they're going to have the same frequency. So that's where this phase lock comes from.